What are the major factors we expect to affect credit quality in the containers and packaging sector? We'll find out in today's special edition of Credit Matters TV. I'm your host, Ola Ferranzi, and I'm joined today by Henry Facucci, a director in our commodities group. Welcome, Henry. Hi, Ola. Hi, how are you? Good. So let's talk about some of the more pressing issues in the containers and packaging sector as we go into 2015. First of all, what's our credit outlook for the year? Sure. Uh, we have a, a generally a very good uh, stable outlook, uh, generally all, all across the uh, sector. Um, we have uh, essentially a stable outlook on the entire sector except for one company. So we cover about 45 companies globally, and there's only one company uh, that is not a stable outlook. Um, generally, um, we believe that the fundamentals in the sector are pretty healthy, um, largely because of the uh, demand for food and beverage, um, and tr uh, volume trends are pretty healthy on that front. So that should continue to uh, support the, uh, the stable uh, operating margins and the volumes going forward and in, uh, going into 2015. All right. And just talking about more general issues, what are the most significant macroeconomic and policy mm -hmm. initiatives that might uh, affect the, the containers and packaging? Industry? Sure, Ola. Um, so basically, we look at three key indicators. Uh, so we look at GDP, uh, unemployment, and uh, uh, consumer spending. So all three indicators are pointing uh, uh, favorably going into 2015. So. Um, those should continue to support the, uh, the, the trends that uh, you know, I was alluding to before. Uh, the margin should continue to hold up um, as in the past going into 15. And uh, the uh, trends uh, on the volume should continue to support uh, uh, based on what these indicators tell us. Okay. And moving on to raw materials, what's your mm -hmm. expectation for price volatility? Sure. sure. So uh, we'll continue to expect the, uh, the short-term volatilities. Uh, we've always said that in the past. Uh, but generally speaking, I think going into um, 2015, uh, I think it's going to be a favorable story, and uh, the, the volatility uh, should be relatively flat. Uh, two factors supporting this will be uh, the lower oil price um, that uh, I think is a uh, pretty uh, uh, well, um, you know, uh, expected uh, uh, assumption going forward, and uh, the whole ga uh, sh shale gas story should uh, continue to be uh, a favorable story, uh, and uh, in terms of resin prices, uh, that should continue to be stable. Okay. Now, how about M and A? What are your expectations mm -hmm. for the pace of M and A in the sector? Sure, M and A uh, generally has picked up. Uh, uh, you know, you'll see that uh, there's been uh, M&A transactions where they've resulted in uh, uh, downgrades, uh, and then you'll see some that, uh, you know, wherever you have from ratings. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, we've had uh, Crown uh, Holdings acquire uh, Mivisa. That's uh, clearly resulted in a downgrade. Um, and, uh, you know, in other instances, you know, we've had uh, Sunoco Products. Uh, they've acquired uh, Weidenheimer. Uh, there was enough flexibility in the ratings, so we uh, uh, from the ratings uh, in that particular transaction. And um, in other cases, uh, we've had a company uh, called Consolidated Container, uh, when they uh, acquired Envision. That downgrade was uh, driven by two factors, additional debt and uh, also weaker operating trends. Uh, so when you kind of put the two together, that resulted in a downgrade. So, um, you know, we'll continue to see these M&A um, transactions going into 2015, as we've uh, seen in the past. Um, uh, but it's really a case-by-case, case. you know, it depends on uh, what these uh, companies uh, do in terms of financial policies uh, and uh, what uh, level of tolerance they have. All right. So you've talked about a couple of acquisitions. Um, I'm curious if the level of private equity activity in mm. the industry has changed recently. And also, um, in terms of those shareholder-friendly actions that we see often, um, mm -hmm. have those affected ratings recently? Yeah, the private equity ownership hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, uh, but one thing that continues to be a um, uh, you know, thing that continues to hold up is the level of private equity ownership in the sector. That continues to be a pretty high portion. Um, you know, in terms of the um, the shareholder rewards, uh, we've had a um, uh, handful of transactions where. Um, you know, whether it's dividend recaps or 
um, you know, uh, you know, just getting uh, e um, cash back to the uh, equity holders. So uh, a lot of those cases have resulted in um, affirm, you know, affirmation of the ratings. Um, and I think the the key reason there is really uh, for the private equity owned companies. We do factor in a highly leveraged financial risk profile uh, in light of um, uh, these types of transactions. So. Um, so in most cases, we'll, we'll see the, uh, an affirmation because it's already built into the ratings. Um, there's certain cases where um, there is an impact on the ratings. Uh, and in those cases, I think it's uh, those transactions where the leverage is really pushed to the outer limits of the financial risk profile. Uh, we've seen that with B-Way Holdings uh, this past summer where we downgraded them to a B-minus from B. Uh, on the back end of the uh, dividend recap, which was all debt financed. So, so you know, we'll see those, but uh, uh, most of the transactions we'll see uh, that the ratings do hold up. All right, so we'll, we'll expect some short-term volatility and uh, a little bit of a, an uptick possibly in, uh, in M&A. Thank you for going over those issues, uh, mm -hmm. Henry, in this episode of Credit Matters TV. Thank you, Ola. To read the full article along with our other top 10 frequently asked questions reports, visit the URL at the bottom of your screen. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you next time.